Welcome to our channel Forensic Genesis. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you. The field of forensic sound fascinating to us, so does the divisions and evidence related to it. As we have already started with our crime scene investigation lecture series, so you all must have been aware of the different crime scene evidences that investigative officers or police officers find at the crime scene. The fingerprint is one of the most crucial kinds of trace evidence. Why this particular evidence is so essential for criminal identification? To know about it, let us dive into our next lecture series dedicated to fingerprints and begin with the introduction. Let's talk about the definition of fingerprint. So, it is basically an impression left by the friction ridge of a finger or we can say a study of ridge patterning is known as fingerprint. Now, what is exactly are the friction ridges? These are the wrinkles or in layman language that the lines and the patterns that we have on our palm are friction ridges. Therefore, the skin covering the anterior surface that is palm of human hand and plantar surface that is sole of the human foot is different in texture and appearance than the one which covers the rest of the human body. The skin on the palmer and plantar surfaces is continuously wrinkled with narrow minute ridges also known as frictional ridges as I told you and is also completely free from hair and oil glands. However, there is a profusion of sweat glands and those are relatively larger in size. Now, let's just discuss some relevant terms to fingerprints. The first one is dermatopyphics. That is, the study of the skin patterning on fingers, palms, soles and toes is the dermatoglyphics, in which derma means skin and glyph means a carving. Therefore, the patterns which are present on the finger, palms and soles that is making our patterns. The next one is the tyloscopy. A method of studying fingerprints to stabilize the identification is known as dactyloscopy. So in this we are studying the patterns which are present on our fingerprint which are made up of the friction ridges. They are making a special kind of pattern which helps in identifying the person's identity. If you see your hands, you will notice that each of your finger have some kind of a pattern. These are the pattern which are classified as fingerprint patterns. So if in other words, uh, if you want to explain the fingerprint, it is an impression of the friction ridges of all or any part of the finger. A friction ridge is a raised portion of the epidermis layer on the skin of palmer, palm and fingers on plantar that is sole and toes consisting of one or more connected ridges units on skin. These ridges are also known as dermal ridges or dermal papilla. Fingerprints may be deposited in natural secretions from the exocrine gland present in the friction ridge skin that is secretion consisting primarily of water or they may be made by ink or other contaminants transfer from the peaks of friction skin ridges to a relatively smooth surface. The term fingerprint normally refers to impression transfer from the pad on the last joint of the fingers and thumbs. That means if you have any kind of material on your hand like grease or ink and you are touching those hands on some kind of a surface you are transferring your fingerprint which are visible and you can see the pattern that is present on your fingerprint in some cases you just touch a surface and you are leaving your fingerprints there it is because of the sweat which is present on your hands that is how we are leaving the traces of fingerprints on any kind of surface so there are some 
specific properties of fingerprints. They are unique to an individual. They are persistent and does not change with age. They cannot be destroyed or even if damaged. The factors considered for identification are so wide that it's almost impossible to abolish or the fingerprints detail of a person or destroy all the fingerprint details of a person. They can be lost only with the loss of limb phalanges but still since all 10 phalanges pins are recovered in case of a criminal so impersonation is not possible or we can say if someone is trying to hide their identity or manipulate their identity it can be identified using fingerprints fingerprints cover three principles which are important while we are studying the finger patterns and the other characteristics related to fingerprints so the first principle is a fingerprint is an individual characteristic no two fingers have yet been observed to possess identical rich characteristics whether it is a fingerprint of a monozygotic twin as well even the monozygotic twins are identical twins does not contain the same fingerprint that is why fingerprint is considered as individual characteristics it cannot be same second one is a fingerprint will remain unchanged during an individual's lifetime that is principle of persistency it remains same throughout the life third one is Fingerprints have general rich patterns that permit them to be systematically classified. That is principle of variety. So how this is happening will be talking this in details. So as I was saying, the first principle is no two fingers have yet been observed to possess identical rich characteristics. That is principle of individuality. The reason behind it or the detail behind it is, is According to Francis Galton's calculation, Francis Galton has classified the fingerprint pattern. We will be studying this in detail in our upcoming lectures. According to him, the odds of two individual fingerprints being the same are in 1 in 64 billion. Also, the general shape and pattern can be same but rich characteristics identity number relative position imparts individuality to fingerprints so in case of general pattern that is your arch loop file can be same in two person but the pattern which are made up of ridge those ridge will be at different location the shape size will be different in each individual so even if you are having the same kind of fingerprint pattern you will be having the different location of the which characteristics that is why it is individual to a person fingerprints remain constant for the life and cannot be altered except by the destruction of skin fingerprints are present from both uh, on epidermis and dermis layer of skin throughout the world. Next one is principle of persistency. It states that a fingerprint will remain unchanged during an individual's lifetime. So how this is happening? How come you cannot change the fingerprint throughout the life or it remains same? So as we discussing in this state, in the cross section of the skin, the boundary of cells is observed separating the epidermis and dermis layer of skin. So we have a structure of skin which contains three layers. Epidermis is the outer layer at that you can see. The dermis is the inner layer and there is one layer in between that is called as dermal papilla. That determines the form and pattern of the ridge on the surface of the skin. So the formation of the patterns is happening on the dermal papilla. Once the dermal papilla develops in the human fetus during embryonic state, the rich pattern will remain unchanged throughout the lifespan of an individual except for enlargement during growth of the limbs, that is hands and feet. If an injury reaches deeply enough into the skin, 
and damages the dermal papilla, a permanent scar will be formed. For this to happen, such a wound have to penetrate up to 2 mm beneath the skin surface. The presence of permanent scars would serve as a new and additional characteristics for the purpose of identification. So those permanent scars are not changing the pattern that was already present on your hand. It's just adding another feature or another characteristics for the purpose of identification. The pattern will remain same if the dermal papilla is not damaged or it has not been destroyed. Third principle is principle of writing. It states that fingerprints have general rich patterns that permit them to be systematically classified. So if we talk about in detail, as I have told you already, we have a major classified patterns that is loop, arch, word. So if these rich patterns then permit them to be systematically classified. Loop is present almost 60 to in 60 to 65 percent of population. If we talk about the world, it is present in 30 to 35 percent of population and art is in 5 percent of population. Let's further move to our next slide, which shows the role of fingerprints in identification. The fingerprints are unique. No individuals have yet till date been reported to possess exactly same fingerprints, whether they are monozygotic twins or normal to people. The surface we touch, it, the fingerprints leave impression on them. It can be visible or invisible, totally depending whether your hands contain any kind of sticky material or any kind of visible material like ink, paint, etc. If not, there will be some kind of sweat on your hand or oil which leaves the traces on any, any kind of surface. Superficial injuries does not change the fingerprints and even when the new skin grows, the same pattern which appears as it was before. As you have seen many, uh, many times, you, the skin just peel off normally. That does not change the fingerprints at all. The new skin is growing but the pattern will remain same. It's just the epidermis here that is growing again. The fingerprints have been formed in the dermal papilla in the fetus which cannot be changed like this. Fingerprints have served governments all over the globe during the past thousand years providing accurate identification of criminals. They are the very basis for recording criminal history at every police agency all over the globe. Fingerprints are the most commonly used forensic evidence outnumbering the other evidences as it also helps in getting the DNA from the fingerprints. So it plays a crucial role because you can get the identification of a person through the fingerprints as well as you can get the DNA from them. Now let's talk about the importance of fingerprints. Fingerprint plays an important role in personal identification that considered as the greatest contribution to law enforcement. The fingerprint has its own science which plays unique role for justice and also in further areas where positive identification is important. So the fingerprint science can help in identification of a criminal as if you get the fingerprints at any uh, crime scene. It also helps in assisting the prosecutors in presenting their cases in the light of defendants' previous records, imposition of more equitable sentences by the courts, exchange of criminal identifying information with identification bureaus for foreign countries in case of mutual interest, assisting to probation or parole officers and to parole boards for their enlightenment in decision making. It also helps in maintaining the record of the identity record of the service or criminal. Apart from that, it also helps in identifying the deceased person or unconscious person. It helps in the detection of bank robberies or in the disaster victim cases. If a person is missing, if someone has some kind of automobile, firearm, aircraft, it also helps in identifying those license. If there is a mistaken identity, it can be solved through the fingerprints or if there is a identification of a person in a particular kind of case, like a nap and robbery, it can be 
find out through the fingerprints. These are some references that you can go through. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, subscribe and share. Forensify your life with Forensic Genesis. Thank you.